Cheers, guys, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. Ah. In this pancast, we are going to talk about cooking while high, some deals at Costco, Movio Cookware, got an update on our peanut butter poll, and more. Let's get started. Now, when I talk about cooking while high, what I'm talking about here is not that time in college when you came in late and made that chili maple syrup and Fruit Loops burrito. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. What I'm talking about here is camping, cooking at high altitude, where we went camping um, a couple weekends ago up at Mirror Lake in the High Uintas. Uh, our campsite there was at 10,400 feet. And what I want to show here is this water. Look at this water, it's boiling put a thermometer in there. And as we all learned in high school science, at sea level, water boils at 212. Here at 10,400 feet, boils at about 194, 195 Fahrenheit. Good Lord. So because water boils at about 20 degrees lower temperature than at sea level, that's going to change the temperature at which you are boiling things, at which your food is cooking. And that means your food is going to take a lot longer to cook and some foods may just not cook correctly at all at higher altitude. Uh, for example, if you like to do a big pot of chili on a camping trip and you use any kind of dried beans, I would get rid of those dried beans altogether. I would not use dried beans at all. They may never soften, even if you cook them for several hours at higher altitude. Now at home, I don't use pre-cooked rice or pre-cooked pasta, but on camping trips, especially at higher altitude, you might have better luck if you take some of this pre-cooked pasta or pre-cooked rice. And I also like to do a big camping beef stew from time to time. And you gotta change the way you cook this as well. So normally I will simmer that beef for a while, then add the firmer root veggies, the potatoes and carrots for kind of that second half of cooking. You may have to plan on an extra half hour, perhaps even an extra hour to get those potatoes and carrots done. A couple other tips, if you cook with charcoal, here I am making kind of that Dutch oven 101 camp cobbler, uh, cast iron Dutch oven, and I'm using charcoal. Note that at higher altitude, it seems like those charcoal briquettes just don't burn quite as hot as they do lower down, uh, probably a little bit less oxygen up there. And you're gonna need to use more briquettes. So go ahead and use more than you think you're gonna need. And because things take so much longer to cook, you may need to start a second chimney full of briquettes a half hour or so in so that you can continue cooking. So get outdoors, get high, and do a little cooking. <laughs> Next up, talking about Costco. Costco deals. In the last pancast, we were talking about those Seagate hard drives, eight terabytes. And I thought it was a pretty good deal for around $120. I was in Costco over the weekend and they had those same hard drives, eight terabytes down to $99. Good Lord. What that tells me is that the economy has slowed and things are being marked down. I saw that Target's earnings this week, they announced their earnings are down 90%. Good Lord. That sounds like a slowdown to me. On the upside though, a lot of things are going to be marked down. So be aware that there are gonna be some bargains out there. Along those lines, I saw that gasoline has been down something like 60 straight days, still much higher than a couple of years ago, but it may have come down off the peak. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? If you're standing at the pump and the one paying, it's definitely good that prices have come down. On the other hand, why are prices coming down? If it's because they've gotten the supply chain worked out and supplies are coming on board, and there's more supply and that brings prices down, that's a good thing. If inflation and prices have gotten so high that there is demand destruction and the economy is slowing down and there's less demand for gasoline, that might be a bad thing. And do we know yet which one it is? Don't know yet, we'll just have to wait and see. Peanut butter. We had talked last pancast about whether you put your peanut butter in the fridge or not. My wife and I had a little kerfuffle about me keeping my Adam's peanut butter in the fridge. And I asked you guys, do you refrigerate your peanut butter? Put up a poll. Um, almost 500 people have voted. And 20% of you put your peanut butter in the fridge after opening. 
Now there is a little wrinkle here for kind of processed peanut butters like this. This has, of course, roasted peanuts and salt. It also has sugar, hydrogenated vegetable oil to prevent separation. These, I don't worry about putting these in the fridge after they open because they're not going to separate. The wrinkle here is with this Adams, if you can see, when these jars have not been opened, the uh, peanuts and oil separate. So this is only peanuts and salt. And down here, you've got kind of a cement layer. And up here, you've got an oil layer. And when you open these things, you have to kind of mix that oil in there. And then I do put that peanut butter in the fridge because once I get that oil stirred back in there, I feel like the, the cold temperature in the fridge kind of prevents that peanut butter from separating back out. So I'm kind of in the middle ground here. This I don't put in the fridge. The atoms I do. Moviel pans. I put up a big review of some Moviel M. Cook stainless steel pans this past week. I liked them. I gave them a thumbs up. Uh, I got a lot of feedback on that review. Uh, Philip594 wrote in and said he thinks Moviel's quality control is terrible. Now, I think I have seven pieces of Moviel. I got two carbon steels, two coppers, and then the three stainless steel plus uh, several lids. I think three lids. So I've got really 10 pieces of Moviel. I've had no trouble whatsoever with quality. But I want to uh, bring up a point here, and that's that I turn down a lot of cookware from companies. They want to send me stuff. Um, I always say, no, I want to buy the stuff myself. It keeps me and you aligned. Kind of sucks for the old pocketbook. But as far as reviews and credibility and being able to see what the normal person, the experience they have when they buy cookware, keeps us all kind of in the same boat, aligned, if you will. So with my Moviels, I bought them at retail just like anybody else, and I haven't had any problem with them. So pretty happy with my Moviels so far. Someone named Viking Shaver. There's a mental image I was not prepared for. Viking Shaver wrote in and said, hey, Scott, I use the Movio M Cook line. He has nine of the M Cooks, and they've been his daily drivers since 2016. So that makes me feel a little bit better there if I recommend something, and a lot of people seem to agree with the review. Always is a good uh, check. Make sure we're not too crazy. And completely subjective, just talking a little cookware here. I do like having some Moviels around because they're not completely unique, but lots of people don't have them. Pretty much everybody has an all-clad D3 frying pan. I have one, I like my D3, nothing wrong with it, great pan. But I also like having kind of some of that fancier stuff too, maybe some stuff that not everybody else has. So, so in some respects, there may not be night and day differences in cooking performance with a Moviel versus a D3 versus a Debouillet versus what have you. But sometimes it's just nice to have some of that kind of fancier, higher end stuff that maybe not everybody else has. Kind of just makes you feel good in the kitchen. Just me. Couple of quick housekeeping notes. Uh, you guys have sent in a ton of paella information. What I'm gonna do is buy another paella pan, a new paella pan, do a big review and incorporate a lot of that paella knowledge you guys have sent in. So that's gonna be a video that's coming up. I'm probably gonna buy a large paella pan. If somebody wants to talk me out of that and into another one, post that in the comments below the video. But I'm leaning towards the lodge right now. Also in the hopper is that big review of the DeMeyer ProLine Atlantis frying pan. You guys saw me unbox that a couple of videos ago. So that one is in the pipeline. And I also picked up a stove, enamel cast iron Dutch oven, a four quart. Um, there's a site called Cutlery and More. I don't have any kind of relationship with them, not a sponsor or affiliate links there, but uh, occasionally they run some giant sales. They had these stove four quart dutch ovens with the decorative knob for 125 bucks now this four quart i wasn't looking for one but they had them for about 200 dollars off almost 70 percent off of list and the price was just so good i couldn't pass it up so those knobs are typically about 30 dollars on their own the dutch oven was 125 with the knob so 95 dollars for stove enamel cast iron i am all over that and back on camping cooking, I actually took that stove camping, used it to cook in our camper trailer. It turned out to be a great size for kind of one pot meals for a small family. So I wasn't really looking for a four quart. Actually very pleased with this thing. We made sloppy joes in it, made kind of some of that weeknight chili just with ground beef and a can of beans and a can of tomatoes and that packet of spice mix. Dressed it up a little bit with some onion and jalapenos. 
but it actually turned out really, really nice. And who would have guessed it, but fancy French cookware actually did a great job on a camping trip. I was not expecting that. That about wraps her up. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast. <laughs>